This is the 530 News on KAJ, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Don Fisher. Our top story tonight, Lincoln County authorities are investigating the deaths of an elderly couple found dead in a car near Troy. Lincoln County Sheriff's Sheriff Robbie Bow says the couple, couple from Albertine, Washington were found missing in August. The couple identified as 79 year old Bruce Halsman and 71 year old Carol Jean Bruce had initially been reported missing by a family member after they indicated their intentions to commit suicide together in a Facebook post in late June. Using credit card data, a detective from Alberdeen tracked their movements to Libby. A city police officer spoke to the couple on August 11th at a local motel, but it was reported that the couple was in good health and denied plans to commit suicide to that officer. A few days later, a family member received a letter from Bruce indicating that she and Hulsman decided to commit suicide and to hide themselves in the most remote woods they could find. The couple's vehicle was discovered by an area resident on Monday afternoon off a of Forest Service Road in the Troy area. Two deputies from the Lincoln County Sheriff's Department determined that the couple's completed suicide happened. The, the incident remains under investigation. In local news, a group of senior culinary students from Flathead Valley Community College will transform their instructional kitchen into a pop-up restaurant for the next three weekends. Named Eclipse, the restaurant will open tomorrow, and they're asking the public to come give it a try. MTN's Nicole Miller has the story. With their pop-up restaurant just a day away from opening, the senior culinary students at Flathead Valley Community College are busy preparing. We're doing an Italian Caribbean restaurant fusion style and the concept um, is going to make old world flavors meet new world flavors. Named Eclipse, the restaurant will only be open a short period of time. The Eclipse is two things coming together and that's what we're trying to accomplish as well and it is something that only happens over a short period of time and same with our pop-up restaurant. Our teacher gives us parameters of what we can kind of do, but it's really up to us of what we want to be, who we want to be, what we want to become. The pop-up restaurant is the student senior capstone project and it showcases the skills they've been learning for the last 18 months in the program. Chef Howard Karp, who helped build and grow the successful culinary program, is the student's instructor. We have a very unique program here. I really try to give the students a real feel of the outside, what the real world is in my craft. Eclipse will be open for the next three weekends in the instructional kitchen in the lower level of the Arts and Technology Building at FBCC. Making reservations is recommended. Reporting in Kalispell, Nicole Miller, MTN News. And the restaurant officially opens tomorrow, but seats are already sold out. Its hours of operations will be Thursdays through Saturdays from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. for the next three weekends. The Kalispell Chamber of Commerce will hold its final luncheon of 2017 next Tuesday, and they're bringing in a special guest to get advice about redevelopment of the downtown area. The main focus of the luncheon will be how Kalispell can accelerate the investment in the downtown core area now that the timeline is set for removal of the train tracks. The head of development authority in Denver, Tracy Hudgens, will attend the luncheon to talk about how Denver was handed the redevelopment of their own downtown. As Kalispell begins to redevelop downtown, they will look to Denver for advice. As president of the chamber, Joe Unterreiner, says that, the, the, that they are the best examples in the western United States for successful urban redevelopment. He also added that not only will they seek advice for what Denver did to create success, but also what they would have changed or done differently. Not just their successes, but we want to learn, you know, what they would change, maybe what, what worked, but also what didn't work, uh, things they might have done differently, uh, ways that we can leverage uh, both public and private resources to help accelerate investment and job growth in the downtown area is what this luncheon is going to be all about. And people who want to attend the lunch must register by the end of the day on Friday, and you can contact the Chamber office if you're interested. Switching over to weather, Mother Nature turned on us today for after a couple beautiful days of weather, and now there may be another shift. But for more on that, let's take it over to Chief Meteorologist Erin Yost for her first forecast. Erin? That's right, a little bit of everything this work week, Don. Today we've seen those clouds on the increase, even a 
few scattered mountain snow and valley rain showers amounting to just shy of a tenth of an inch of rainfall at the Kalispell Airport. We've also seen breezy conditions at times. A cold front moved through. Now with that passing, we will see cooler temperatures settling on in. Cool enough, as a matter of fact, to see snow levels down to around three or 4,000 feet over the next couple of days. Tonight, we have a winter weather advisory out for elevations here. You see shaded in purple above 4,000 feet, where we could be talking a couple of quick inches of snow. I'll let you know if Kalispell will see any coming up in your full forecast. All right, thank you, Erin. Tribal leaders, health specialists, and others from around the state gathered in Helena today to discuss what can be done to address suicide among Montana Native Americans. For the start of the Zero Suicide Academy, Governor Steve Bullock opened the event by thanking them for their dedication to dealing with this issue. The program is a major component of a statewide plan to reduce Native youth suicides. The goal is to share ideas people can take back and put to use in their own communities. Leaders say it's important for agencies to rethink the way they approach this issue. It's about what each one of us are willing to commit to do. Are we willing to look at um, breaking down barriers and silos to work together? And what am I personally willing to do to address the multiple issues that face our tribal communities? The Zero Suicide Academy is based off a nationwide zero suicide framework for suicide prevention, and it will continue tomorrow in Helena. Members of the Montana Air National Guard are on their way from Great Falls to help with relief efforts in Puerto Rico. 26 members of the 219th Red Horse Squadron will give aid to those affected by Hurricane Maria. Much of the island is still without power three weeks after the storm hit. The heavy construction specialists will operate and maintain a similar system to a disaster relief bed down set near San Juan. That system offers shelter and services to emergency responders during a natural disaster. We'll do an initial site survey of where we're going to set up our, our disaster relief bed down set or DRBS. From there, uh, we'll set that, start setting that up, get initial capability, and then bed down the personnel that are going to be there and then maintain the, the generators, the water purification unit, the terrain unit, the laundry, uh, and the shave shower units as well. And this is not the first time the 219th has been deployed to help in a natural disaster. In 2013, they traveled to Colorado to help build roads after the state experienced 50-year floods. The 30-day mission was short notice, and all are volunteers. Thank you to your generosity as support continues to pour in for our Montana Wildfire Relief Fund. Yesterday, we raised more than $18,000, bringing our grant total to $442,000. And this week, we officially enter the next phase of the application process, which is now open. The fund is a partnership between the Montana Television Network and the Montana Community Foundation. Organizations, groups, and individuals who think they may qualify are welcome to apply. Applications will be accepted through November 10th, and a panel of fire experts, Montana Community Foundation representatives, and MTN staff will distribute funds based on need and relevance. And donations are still being accepted. Information on how you can apply is posted on our website at kaj18.com. In national news, California is still dealing with their own set of fires. At least 21 people are dead and nearly 700 are still reported missing in the wildfires that are tearing through Northern California. Fire crews are now bracing for a change in the weather that could complicate their efforts to get the fires under control. Chris Martinez has the latest from Santa Rosa, California. A view from above shows the magnitude of the devastation. Block by block, scorched earth replaces what were once vibrant neighborhoods. Nine-year-old Lily Biagini and her mom were away from their Santa Rosa home Sunday night before the fire broke out. They weren't able to return. I lost my legs. I lost everything. The fire destroyed Lily's home. Her prosthetic legs were inside. They're really important to me. They were a lot of money. Across the region, wildfires are still burning out of control. And make no mistake, this is a serious, critical, catastrophic event. In Solano County, crews are raking grass and setting backfires, hoping to steer the flames away from homes. Authorities are urging people to get out of harm's way. It's all about life saving and evacuations. My advice to those of you who are advised is go. The firefighting effort is expected to get even more challenging in Santa Rosa. Gusty winds are in the forecast. We're working very diligently. These are very extreme conditions. But wary crews are stretched thin because there are at least 17 major fires burning across eight counties. I wish I could say the cavalry's coming. It's not. Not yet anyway. 
Fire officials say they still don't know what caused the fires. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Santa Rosa, California. So far, at least 170,000 acres have been scorched and thousands of homes and businesses have already been destroyed. And coming up after the break, a Western Montana small town chef has been chosen to share her recipes with a national audience. We'll have that story. And later in sports, a Lady Grizz basketball star is done for the year again after a knee injury. Derek has the reaction coming up. 